All right. Well, the reason for making this test is that we've been having some difficulty uh, with some of the Rhodes amplifiers. We um, have a situation where there's a slight amount of crossover distortion that occurs on the decay. And um, we were wondering about this as to whether or not the transformer was damaged. And what we have here is a, a, an impedance meter, a Z-meter. And it is set up to read the impedances of the transformer. This one is a known good working unit. And um, this is the primary. And we're reading... We're reading 600 ohms. And the two secondaries read 31 and 31, pretty much. Um, this is with a transformer 606350, and they're showing 006401 on there. This is uh, a unit we're having trouble with. 606 307 006401. Um, and the primary on this one reads 1100 ohms, 1111. The um, secondary reads 34. And the secondary on the other side reads 34. Uh, this particular one has the, the crossover distortion, and the other one does not. Uh, we find this is very interesting because the process repeats. Um, the ones that seem to have problems seem to have a higher impedance, and we're not sure why. We've got this unit here, which is uh, 606350 and 006401 on the numbers on the transformer and as we go to the uh, the primary we're reading six about 700 ohms or so try to get a good reading about 677 on the primary which is well above the 10 percent tolerance you would expect which sent me something happened this one reads 31 ohms on the secondary and um, 30 Let me see if we can get, yeah, 31 ohms on this secondary. So, therefore, we're seeing a discrepancy within the transformers itself between one and the other. We also note this unit here has been damaged. It's a burned resistor, and we're not sure how much that is uh, affecting the unit. So therefore, we're, we're, we're looking into this uh, further uh, to find out what the situation is and see if we can find the result of the distortion. It's either a bias issue or something happens to the transformer and there's insufficient drive. All right, we have a client's uh, unit here. We're going to measure the bias across the 0.47, and we're only looking at about 0.1. And we're going to measure the other side as well. And it's uh, 0 0.1, 001. Well, it's not really very much. It should be about 005, 006. Uh, one of the things we noticed is uh, we can match transistors, but they're over a wide range. And if yours happen to have numbers on them, say like uh, 200 or so, uh, you might have to increase the bias slightly. And uh, otherwise, you'll get this. Uh, we'll, we'll show you the... Uh, the wiggle and the waveform. If you'll direct yourself to the screen, up in here and right here, this area and this area, you'll see it's not a very continuous sine wave. It's got a little wiggle to it. It manifests itself as distortion. Uh, it's a form of crossover distortion, uh, and it, it manifests itself as an incomplete bias where the transistors are not very carefully matched. You can also have this problem, by the way, if you have a uh, problem with the transformer because this is uh, using a phase inverting transformer, but in any case uh, this particular unit 
has been um, um, giving us a little trouble on the, on the decay of a waveform or note. A uh, slight amount of distortion, which is audible. And uh, so we're going to uh, get rid of that by taking the uh, 820 ohm resistor, uh, which is seen here and here. And uh, we're um, going to add a 10K 1 watt. 2% resistor in parallel with it to increase the bias. Now, this is a fixed bias arrangement, and we want you to know if you have a transistor whose uh, beta number on the top is over 300, you probably won't need this. This is only if you absolutely do need it. And uh, this will be only for low values of beta. The, uh, the beta numbers for some of the other transistors, the older style germanium ones, were um, not that high. They only went as high as 300. Some of these will go higher than that. Uh, but in, in any case, putting it on is very simple. They're simply put in parallel. And uh, what we'll do is we'll show you the results on this other amplifier. And we have to do this. This is a question of uh, um, airtime here. But the uh, we'll take this one, and um, we're going to transfer our leads. show that the, uh, the unit has been repaired. They both had similar problems when they came in. And this is, this is only an adjustment. The bias normally across the 0.47 ohm resistor should be in the area of 005 to 006 volt. Okay, so we're, not, we're going to turn this back on again. And we're going to uh, go across the resistor, the 0.47 and we're having 006 volts on the meter reading. All right, and then if we apply a signal, you'll see that the lump is gone. It's a continuous waveform, very sinusoidal, and there should be no audible distortion at this point in time. The difference is uh, uh, less than five, five milliamps bias to 20 milliamps bias. They normally should be in the area of 15 to 20 milliamps, but as I said, with the fixed resistors the way they are and the 5% tolerance, the problem will be that uh, some units with low beta will not operate correctly. They'll be very close. Uh, they won't be terribly, terribly distorted, but they won't operate correctly. And you can, can, can um, compensate for the crossover by adding the resistor. It takes you five minutes. Uh, now, you should not necessarily order the uh, resistors unless you absolutely need it. You've bought the kit. You're putting them in. Some work fine. If it's a high beta, they may work fine with the unit the way it is. And that's, uh, that's the rest of this tech tip.